Hold up, wait a minute, let me put some truth in it. Hey, Uma! <laughs> Not to be popular. It's just I'm inspired by my brother. That reality tip was brother, the most powerful voice on the internet. That reality angel snubbing up seven. That's right, brother. I'm calling you out, brother. I'm calling. I I'm building you. I'm putting you out there, brother. I'm shouting you out. That's that's what. That's my inspiration. We want to make sure that we're not just working to be first, but we're working to be right. A lot of times there are situations when things are just happening so fast. It's always important to be fast, but we always want to be right. When we look at how do we move forward and not ask or beg for reparations, how do we take reparations? Well, the initiative, our organization, we have a plan, and we're going to be taking over cities in Mississippi. We're coming, and see, we ain't gonna beg. Because there are cities in Mississippi, and I'd name one, uh, Mount Bayou, Mississippi. That's all black. And you don't realize it. You don't realize it that God has been imprisoned. Mm. The devil was able to imprison God. So right inside your own self, your God self has been imprisoned, and you have a false sense of self running rampant inside the temple. This is why you understand what I'm saying? You, yes, sir. We have to bring reality's temple here on earth. Reality's <laughs> temple here on earth. Yes, Morals are just, you know, subjective. But when you have laws and things on paper that say, if you do this, we're going to punish you by incarcerating mm -hmm. you and you mm -hmm. break them and you're dumb enough to get caught, then you're just dumb. All right, all right. Shout out to Reality's Temple in the building. Well, just from us, I got to get him on here, man. You talk about somebody polarizing. Whoa. <laughs> that brother, that brother is, uh, <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Shout out to the brother, though, Justin. Faster than 
than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. the African Day Parade here on Reggie's old block. <laughs> so, what's up, Reggie? So, what the garment that you have on, what the flag represents for right here? Well, as you can see, the man right here, Marcus Garvey, you know what I'm saying, who started, the, started gave us our own flag. They came out with a song, the white man came out with a song talking about um, no one has a flag. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody has a flag except the, except the black man. Right. So, Marcus Garvey said, and that is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance uh, to subscribe, please do, please do subscribe to his channel. He's a he's a good brother. You know, he's trying to he's doing good work and he wants to do good constructive things. He has good information to provide. So please do check out his channel if you get a chance. I stand for nature. I stand for anything that is right. I'm pro-righteous, not pro-black. I am pro-righteous and not pro-black. So do your thing. Hey, my brother, you know I had to call you and thank you personally again. I am pro-black. 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 I'm Derek Grayson, and our country is in a fight for its soul. I'll not only help Georgia, I'll help every American patriot in giving them a chance to live the American dream. It's your right to vote. Please don't let it slip away. Don't let the few rule the many. Rock the vote! Rock the vote! We're not brutalized because we're Muslims. We're brutalized because we are black people in America. The power of this man's courage to say this stuff. It changed the entire trajectory of my life. He was becoming a figure that transcended the nation of Islam. It was politics that really started the rift between Malcolm and the nation. No, the white man is the greatest hate teacher that ever walked there. The FBI was deathly afraid of someone like Malcolm X. What kind of democracy is that? People had to start wondering if something happens to Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm becomes the leader, it's over for all of us. And uh, just then the gunfire went off. Malcolm's death never sat right with me. The investigation was a failure. Asking who's guilty is a dangerous question to ask. What is the real story? It's in the history book. Leave it there. Leave it alone. Elijah Muhammad told everybody, do not raise a hand against Malcolm X. He didn't have to give the order. Someone would take care of him. The FBI should have known. Why doesn't someone want to get to the bottom of this? They never had any intentions of seriously investigating that assassination. That is my mission. I'm not going to stop until I get justice. Because the official count of who killed Malcolm X, it's not true. Do 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 do.
Let's continue this conversation, this, this topic. The topic I've chosen is, I refuse to be anybody or anything's slave. And as a descendant of slaves, born in America, having dark skin, you would think that all of us, would not want to be a slave. So what is messing with my mind and is mind boggling and confusing to me is that you cry, African-American, Negro, Hebrew Israelite, Black Muslim, comedic or whatever, whatever you may call yourself, Black atheist. We who are the descendants of those who were physically enslaved. Why would we have the mentality to continue enslavement? I don't understand that. I don't understand your mentality. Why would you want to be anybody's slave? But you do. You have this obsession with wanting to worship and praise and serve somebody or something. You would think after 400 years, 300 years of physical slavery, you would want nothing to do with that. But you want to serve and praise and worship and obey somebody. Slavery. You don't want to enjoy your life. You want to give your life over to somebody else, something else. I don't understand your thinking. So what's the sense? Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. You just don't like white people. I don't want them to be my master no more. I want a black God. I want a black slave master. So I want to worship T.D. Jakes. You can't worship God. So you have to worship and praise the next best thing. You want to. So T.D. Jakes is your master. Elijah Muhammad is your masa. Umar Johnson is your masa. Louis Farrakhan is your masa. You just don't like the masa. Because you, you say it's natural for you to serve somebody or something. I, I, that God, they, they are not God. It's servitude. What is a slave? A slave's life only benefits their masa. So if you give your turn your life over to God or to Jesus or Muhammad or whomever, you have become a slave. That's the origin of slavery. There's a big shot cat who is the supreme being who's superior over these who are inferior. In fact, I created you. So since I created you, you serve me. That's where the concept, the idea of slavery comes from. It's, it's, it's slavery. You know something? I refuse. Now y'all can be slaves if you want to. I would rather be dead. I would rather not exist than be somebody's slave. It's already bad enough. I live in an environment, a society that's oppressive towards me, racist towards me, biased, unjust. I already got to deal with this crap. Then I got to bow down and serve some sucker who ain't doing nothing to get you out of your oppression. Yo, those who are biased against you and racist and unjust that took your freedom away from you.
you wait on them. You said they're coming to help you. When? 2,000 years have passed. 3,000 years have passed. This God or this Jesus or this Muhammad or all these, these alien creatures, nothing has come to help you, period. And, and y'all are so obsessed with wanting to be a slave, you even try to justify slavery by saying that African slavery was different from European slavery. Well, brother, it, it was. African slavery was much different than European slavery. It was like being part of the family. <laughs> Ooh, the logic. I don't know where y'all getting this stuff from. Slavery is when your life benefits somebody else. So you are still a slave. Oh, but the slave was treated good. There are black people in this nation and there were black people or uh, soul brothers and sisters during slavery who liked their master. He's a good master. He's good to me. Does that make slavery good because you found a good slave master? It's just like when you own a pet. You have some pets who live in houses that the owner pampers the, the dog or the cat or the squirrel or whatever, whatever they have, whatever animal they have enslaved. And then you have those who take a dog or a cat or a monkey or whatever they have enslaved, a dolphin. Because when you put animals in zoos, that's slavery for the animal. Dolphins don't belong in zoos. Dogs don't belong living in your house. Cats don't belong living in your house and riding around in your car. You have enslaved these animals. But you're a good master. It was not meant for them. They were not placed on this planet so they can live in your house. So you can kiss them in the mouth. And talk about they part of your family. If you really loved the dog, if you really loved those cats and the dolphins and the zebras, you wouldn't want to see them in a zoo, the fish in an aquarium. You want to see them free just like you want to be free. And that's why you have a slave mentality. That's why you find some kind of way to justify because you know better than the Caucasian people. You want to be somebody's master. You want to enslave. You want to control. A slave's life only exists to benefit his or her or its master. So the only thing we want to do is change our master. We, up, we upset with white folks. The pink racists. Black slavery is good. I have no interest to enslave anybody. When I get to the point where I can't do labor and can't do for myself, then I will pay you for your labor and for your work. I don't want to enslave you to make you do something for me. I don't understand y'all way of, of, of thinking. It's, it's sick. You suffer from a mental disorder and you're a bunch of hypocrites. Because how can you be all upset to give you reparations for slavery? But yet still, you still practice slavery. And you want to be a slave. You just don't want to be under the control of Caucasian people because they bad. They are bad, my son. But Jesus is good. Muhammad is a good slave master. God is good. And what are you? Their slave. Some of you even say, my life means nothing. I give it all to God. What kind of God? What kind of man wants you, who says they love you, but wants you to be under their foot in a servant position? 
that deny you the opportunity to enjoy your life. This is your life. And the life is brief, it's short. Oh, don't worry, when you die, you have good times after you die in the hereafter, when you go to heaven. When you cross, see, this is just the flesh. But there is no evidence of that. And even if there was an afterlife, why would you still want to give your life to somebody else? What qualifies them? Why do they deserve your and my life? I, I don't understand your way of thinking. Black slavery is, is as good. You want to justify taking somebody's life and you do what you want to do with that life. Like you do your dog and your cat and the goldfish in the bowl and you treat other human beings. We should not even treat animals like that. It's already bad enough. You eat them and you mistreat them before, before you eat them and do, do animals so wrong, then you want to smile and giggle and put a leash around one of them, their necks and walk them in the park. How humiliating. For what? How does taking a dog to the park on a leash benefit the dog? When the dog eat meat and you open up a bag of corn for this dog, and the same thing with cats and these other animals that y'all have enslaved. And especially black people, these who are called black people. You should really be ashamed of yourself. But you copying Masa. But maybe, but maybe that's where Masa got it from. Because y'all said slavery is good under African. So maybe that's where the Caucasian people learned it from. But you don't like how he enslave you because he took it all no respect at all period but under the Africans and that's not necessarily true too because I'm very sure that Africans mistreated slaves but see you need something to justify why you want to continue to be somebody something's slave you just have y'all just had a slave mentality you don't need to be free. You just need to find a, a different kind of masa. That's all that you want to. That's why you can't unite. Because you're really a slave. That's why there's no such thing as black liberation. You don't want to be liberated. You just want to go to a, a different part of the plantation. You want to be in some other slave masa shack. Well, there are those who want to continue to be slaves. That's you. That's, that's on you. But there are many of you who don't want to be slaves to anybody or anything. And we will not submit. I would rather be dead than be a slave. So I guess I asked my own, answered my own question. Why we have not progressed as a people? Because you're not a people. You're a bunch of slaves. Waiting on your massa. And that's the scene that seems like to be the truth. And I have to accept it, although it hurts. You got all your bad boys, they fight and they curse. But Mr. Goody Two Shoes will whip you worse. Free your mind.
when I was a, a younger person, I wanted to be a, an entertainer. I wanted to, I wanted to uh, act and I wanted to sing and I wanted to dance. That's what I wanted to do in life and I felt as though I was pretty good. I was a, as a child, I, my imagination was just off the chain. And I don't want to uh, brag about myself, but I know that I was I was and still to a certain point I'm still very good. I did not want to be a, a actor or a singer or a dancer. I did not want to be an entertainer looking for praise. I did not wish to to I did not seek that career so others could become fanatical over my talent. I just want to express myself and I truly enjoy entertaining people. I love to be able to do something and people find that it was enjoyable. My mother was a person that uh, was very difficult to entertain her. And I used to do certain skits and things, and I would make her smile. So I knew if I was able to bring joy, a little happiness to her heart, because it was very rare that anything made my mother happy. Very rare that my mother would smile and be happy and just enjoy herself. So I knew that my talent was real. If I was able to make my mother smile, make her enjoy what I was presenting, it was not for um, praise. It was not for uh, fame and uh, admiration. It was. It was just. I just wanted to express myself as an entertainer. I just wanted to be able to make people feel happy, so they can enjoy themselves. I just wanted to entertain. No more, no less. And then, years later, I would come to YouTube. And prior to the races, tearing down my work, over 100 channels destroyed on YouTube. Little by little, you would see this ministry just growing and growing. 300 subscribers in a month. Just steady going higher and higher and higher. And then you have those people who don't like what you have to say. Oh, you just out here looking for praise. You out here looking for fame. Looking for money. Well, they could not say that I was looking for money. I have never, never come on YouTube. Matter of fact, for those of you who are old school YouTube, you know that YouTube did not allow you to beg and ask for donations of money on YouTube back in the day. So I was not doing that. I have never done it. I have never had my channel monetized. None of those things. I am not looking for fame and money. If I wanted fame and money, I could. It is still not too late. I can still try my hand at the entertainment industry. It's never too late. A little fat. I'm fatter than what I used to be. <laughs> A lot of us are. I'm fatter, but I get rid of the weight and just get back to where I need to be because the talent is whatever I was doing back in the day. The imagination and the creativity is not there the way it used to be. But I could still, I could still do a little something, something. I know this. I'm not looking for fame. I'm not looking for fortune. I'm not looking for praise. And I'm very sure if I was looking for fame and praise, there's something I can do.
do much easier than the realities temple on earth. Matter of fact, I welcome you. I welcome you to this edition of what I call the realities temple on earth. I am your host, Angel Snuffed Up Seven, brother and minister Talik Ibn Ra. The things that I say from this platform, the things that I say from this rostrum, you cannot even expect to get any fame and fortune from. Because the thing, the, the platform that I represent is not popular. I represent the new age of reality. Rejection of religion, spirituality, and all this black conscious type stuff. Push it all aside. There's something much easier. I could teach Jesus Christ. That would be much easier for my fame and, and, and my fortune and praise. Or teach Islam or this stuff that y'all love. That y'all, you know, talk about going back to Africa. You know, all this stuff that y'all love. You know, Hebrew Israelite stuff, whatever. The things that y'all like and you used to and you love. So apparently, I must not be looking for fame and fortune. Now, there are those. Perhaps in the very beginning, they wanted to bring information to probably awaken the minds, help the people. But now they saw they can make money. Oh, I can, I can make a mon money off of this? And they see people praise them. And honor them. While all these people look up to you like you're a god. They look up to the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And they even say he's Christ. He's some kind of god. They look up to Tariq Nasheed and Yvette Carnell Sanetta. All these YouTubers. You actually have people here. That look up to them like they some kind of gods and special and divine. There was a, a song by Public Enemy. And the song was, Don't Believe the Hype. And all these people, if you talk to them or just listen to them, they believe they're all hype because somebody is giving them some money, because somebody is praising their name. They are celebrity seekers, seeking fame. They're not really looking out for what is in the best interest of us as a people? I want my fame and my fortune. I want my money. I want my booty. And if you're a male, that's what you want. You know, all these women, they throwing their panties at you. You're so divine and wonderful. You want the booty. You want the fame. Oh, wow. Happy, happy, happy. Joy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, happy. I want to send a quick warning. To those of us when we get caught up now even on my little low level I have experienced persons looking at me more than what I am I am just a, a brother who have experienced some things and I share that experience and I offer us advice and suggestions I'm not divine I'm not special I'm no better than you I can make mistakes. I take a duck, take a, and I take a whiz just like you do. That's a fact. But then there are those that get caught up in the hype. The honorable minister, Lord. Now, what have you done, honorable? Be honest with yourself. You haven't done anything honorable. You ain't really done nothing. But those who don't think to high, those who don't really expect a whole lot, you're the honorable. And you get caught up in all that. Now it's to the point, now I'm Christ. I'm some kind of divine Messiah, whatever. This is the thing about fame. A lot of brothers and sisters 
They get caught up in their own hype and they think they are better than anybody. And you suffer from it. And you suffer from that. I followed Michael Jackson for years. But then after Thriller, I saw a change in Michael Jackson. He's, he became this, this arrogant, pompous type guy. I could see it. Because all these people, Michael, the world's greatest entertainer, getting all these accolades, all these titles, all these booty lickers. Michael got to the point where Jermaine Jackson said he had to make it an appointment to go see Michael. What? Are you serious? And see, well, the number one thing is See, death, that's why I love death. Some of y'all, some of you might think that I'm crazy for, for saying that. Death is not bias. Death is not prejudice. Death do not care what your skin color is, young or old, rich or poor, whatever. Death is not bias. See, when death comes knocking at your door, all your money, all your fame, all your wisdom, all that stuff that you talk about don't mean nothing. There was a show called Gilligan's Island. And you had Gilligan, the skipper, Marianne, Ginger, the professor, and the millionaires, the Howells. But when they got stuck on the island, all that money the Howells had, what do it mean? It don't mean nothing. Ginger was a, a, a movie star. She stuck on this island. Now what do it mean? It all means nothing. It's all vanity. You're getting caught up in all this vanity. Matter of fact, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan made a beautiful speech. And I would recommend everybody to watch it. It was it, the, the title of the video was talking about, he was talking about vanity. And he does not, he does not listen to his own words because he's caught up in vanity. It means nothing. And this fame and this fortune, the only reason why all these people love you and praise you is because of your, you can talk real well. Because you can sing, because you can dance. They don't love you. Oh, wow. In vogue. Sister Sweetie, hey, look. Did you just hear what I said? They are not in love with you. Because they don't know. I don't know in vogue. I only know that they they were born to sing. I don't know them. They only know your song, your dance, your speech, your documentaries, or whatever. But they don't know you. And I guarantee you, if a, if a lot of these people could actually live with you and be around you, a lot of them would say, that Negro ain't what I... He ain't what I thought he was. Duh, you was caught up. You don't know him. You caught up in a song and a dance and pretty speeches, but you don't know Farrakhan. You don't know Nuri Muhammad or Ben. You don't know me. You don't know In Vogue. You don't know you were in love. And see, that's what's wrong with being a fanatic. And a fanatic is giving you fake love. It's not real. It's not real love. It's fake. But when you get caught up in the hype, everybody loves me, whatever. So many entertainers thought that people loved them and they died broke. They loved them. And some of them didn't even get a headstone put where they was buried at. But they thought they had all these fans and all this glory that people loved them. No, they love your song and your dance. They don't love you because they don't know you. So... My, my message on this video is simply, don't believe the hype. Do what you do, because that's what you want. Things that make you go, you know, these aren't jokes, these are thoughts, these are things that make you say...
just for the sake of argument, I would like to raise this question to all of you who feel great pride in ancient Kemet or ancient Ethiopia or uh, some great what they may call black civilization of the past 5,000 years ago, 4,000, 3,000, 2,000 or whatever. I would like to ask you a question because I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to comprehend. Just for the sake of argument, we're not going to argue. We're going to uh, present this question as though this is just 1,000% reality is true. Ancient Kemet is your history. Ancient Ethiopia, Timbuktu, whatever it is, the, the incredible history of the Moors and whatever, Whatever you, your heart's desire, whatever it is, for the sake of argument, let's just say it is 1,000% true. We're not going to argue at all. I want to raise a question. And the question or the observation is, how does that help us? How does that help you? Knowing this information. Now, it can help you to inspire you. It can give you a sense of high self-esteem. Okay, I understand that. But other than that, how does it help us? How does it help you? Many of you love your mother. And your mother probably was a wonderful baker. And she would make these incredible, beautiful pies and cakes. In 1954, now your mother is 60, 70, 80 years old. She has not been in a, in a kitchen for years. How does her baking a cake or a pie in 1954 probably before you was even born, how does that help you? I'm just asking. I just want to know. Maybe she passed the recipe down to the children. That's incredible. That's a wonderful thing. But guess what? The same question remains that pie and that cake from 1954 cannot help you in present time. If she passed down the information, if she passed down the recipe, you still have to follow that recipe and with your own hands, make your own cake, make your own pie. Talk black to me. I don't think they heard me, Invo. I don't think they heard me, Invo. What happened in Kemet? What happened in ancient Ethiopia or Timbuktu or whatever, whatever that's that history that y'all love to talk about? It don't help you now unless you take the information that they handed down to you, which they did not. Nobody from Kemet gave you nothing. 
Nobody from Timbuktu gave you nothing. Nobody from ancient Ethiopia gave you nothing. Nobody from nowhere gave you nothing. And that's why you cannot do nothing. And the only thing that you can do is the information that you get from your slave master. And that's why you cannot progress and don't want to progress further than the people that oppress you because that's all that you know. You have no other knowledge outside of what you was given living here in the United States of America going on 500 years. And that's why you can't do no better. Nobody has handed you any information so that you can reproduce. And you have never had to reproduce. If you come from ancient Kemet, if you come from these wonderful, high technological places, then why do you act like a slave? Why you not? You can't produce on your own. Why are you still under the rule of other men? You have never. We have never been independent, like King Noble said. That's a fact. That's a fact. The so-called Negro, the African-Americanists, the Hebrew Israelite, the Moor, whatever you want to call yourself in America, we have never lived independently. We never lived nowhere where we can say we was taking care of ourselves. Never happened. The only thing we know is struggling and trying to avoid being murdered by racists in this country going on 500 years. That's all we know. Welcome to the new age of reality. Your fantasy world is messing you up. Now you tell me and be honest. Which is more beneficial to you or to us? A person talking about the greatness of Kemet or a brother and sister and some others decided let's pool our resources our community has no grocery store we want to be able to get fresh fruits and vegetables and good meat and dairy and bring that to the to our community so let us pool our resources together. I got good credit. So-and-so got good credit. Let's put all our resources together. Well, I don't really know a whole lot about running a grocery store, but I do know, I know I can keep it clean. I know about the janitorial. I know how to make sure that our store keeps clean. Good. What can you do? Well, uh, I'm good at books. I'm good at accounting. I keep our books good. Cool. Uh, what do you do? Well. Uh, I know how to set up the grocery store, put up everything, set up the aisles and whatever. Now, now these persons get together, pool their resources, and open up a grocery store. And now the community has fresh fruits and vegetables, dairy products, and other services. Now, tell me what is more beneficial, what is more beneficial to the community a grocery store actually providing services and clearly is a benefit providing services, providing, creating jobs in the community or foaming at the mouth about what happened 5,000 years, years ago. Foaming at the mouth talking about my mama show baked good cakes in 1954. That don't mean nothing compared to what people are doing right now in the present time with your own hands, with your own brain. With your own abilities. This is not to say that we don't honor the past. When you go visit your mother, you can always tell her, Mama, woo, those pies that you used to cook. Those pies and cakes, woo, they was dynamite. The key word here is the past. 
she can no longer do that. She no longer can bake pies and cakes. Here's your granddaughter, Grandma. She likes to bake pies and cakes like you. We're opening up a bakery and we're using, we're going to use those recipes that you handed to us and we're going to bake our own pies and cakes. And your grandmother, because of, of her health, she might not be able to talk that well or whatever, but she smiled. She said, oh, my babies are doing all right. So if you came from Kemet, or if you came from Timbuktu, or you claim the Moors, or whatever you trying to, the great people that you cry, trying to claim, whatever they was, can they lay back in their chair and smile and say, yeah, they're going to be all right. They, you have nothing. You're doing nothing. You're talking about what somebody did in the past. Nobody cares about your paycheck from last week. Are you getting paid this week? Man, I made $1,000 last week. That's nice. What are you making this week? Well, uh, things ain't, didn't go too well this week. I, I only got 300 this week. So you bragging about $1,000 from last week. But you only have three hundred dollars from uh, that you got that you earned this week. Nobody cares about your thousand dollars from last week. Sounds good. Woo! That, you made a thousand dollars last week. But now we are into the next week. What you got this week? You got a thousand dollars this week? Well, uh, no, sort of short, bro. You know, uh, I only got three hundred this week. So what, what, I mean, how does having a thousand dollars from last week help you this week? It doesn't. It makes no difference if Kemet is your real history or fabricated or ancient Ethiopia or whatever. All these histories and gods that y'all want to claim, it don't make no difference whether it's real or whether it's fake. The thing about it, is it actually doing something for you? Is it producing for you? What does it cause? How does it help you use your hands to produce? To build your own pyramid? To create your own civilization, your own towns, your own cities? It does nothing except feed fantasy. That's what it does. This is the reason why it's necessary to welcome the new age of reality so that we can begin to push on the outside. And you can you can still love Kemet. You can still love these ancient civilizations. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is that you need to be able to use that as inspiration to produce and you're not producing. Why aren't you producing? Because in your mind, it's already up. It's already built. Didn't I tell you about Kimmy? But that does not help you in 2020. Does not help you. Does not. A cake that was baked in 1954 does not help you in 2020. Unless you know how to replicate how to bake that cake. And that's the problem. Other than that, it's just feel good stuff, feel good rhetoric. And what is this feel good rhetoric, this feel good stuff, waiting on Jesus stuff? How is it? How is it doing? What is it benefiting? I don't see, I don't understand it. It's not, what is it doing for you? Except give you an excuse to be lazy.
Hold up, wait a minute, let me put some truth in it. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. This, of course, is the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry, and I am the host, Angel Step Number Seven, Brother and Minister Talik Ibn Ra. A question was brought to my attention, and this question is, or rather, a comment of action. And this comment of action was we as black people, those of us who are civilized, those of us who have the mindset of progress and evolution, those of us who put ourselves on this high pedestal, we should take it upon ourselves to judge those who don't have as much money, as much education, as much sense as we do. This particular group we call hood rats and thugs and uh, you know all types of shady characters and Pookie and Ray Ray and, and Raniqua and Ty Ty Tyrone Nesha and all these different things, people like that, and they wear their hair red, white, and blue and get drunk or whatever they do in their lives. These persons should be eradicated. We should kill Pookie and Ray Ray. <laughs> What's so funny about this is many of us Pookie and Ray Ray are nicknames, and I actually do and had cousins and people in my family called Pookie and Ray Ray. <laughs> so I, it's real funny. And of course, we have people in our family with what with uh with names some of us may consider ghetto names. Whatever ghetto name is, I don't know. Uh, but we consider it a, a ghetto name. It's your name. It didn't come from the Pecklewood. Didn't come from an African. Didn't come from a Haitian. It came from you. But because it come from you, it ain't good enough. It's ghetto. It's ghetto. I, I, I know. I know. So you're trying to show off and you want to be part of somebody. You don't embrace your own unique self. Ghetto name. I, I know. So we need to kill Pookie and Ray Ray in order as a people to progress. This is not the first time I heard this type of talk. Matter of fact, I did not say kill, but back in the day, I had the same type of attitude. Uh, if YouTube did not destroy my work, you would see back in the day, I had some videos talk about the savages of the black community and blah 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 I did not suggest that we kill people but basically ostracize or whatever you don't want nothing to do with this particular group of folks then we have somebody like our wonderful intelligent incredible <laughs> Dr. Umar Johnson Dr. Umar Johnson makes it perfectly clear Dr. Umar Johnson says there's a segment of black boys that's unredeemable. You cannot do nothing with them. There's no talking. You cannot, there's nothing that you can do for them. We need to kill them. Just take a, a bullet to the brain. Pow, pow, pow. Kill them. This is what a school psychologist suggests to us that certain people cannot be helped. And if you cannot help certain people, you need to, you need to put a bullet in their brain. 
That's what Umar Johnson says. And if you notice, we don't never put ourselves in that category. We always suggest that Pookie and Ray Ray and Shaniqua and Ronesha or whatever, they need to get a, boop, a bullet in the brain. Oh, but not you. But not you. You, you. you don't deserve a bullet in the brain. You never include yourself. Because everything about you is perfect. Ain't nothing wrong with you. You don't deserve that. But you can wish death on others. And who give you the right? Who the one give you the right? Where do you have the nerve to judge others? You can tell. You can make a decision whether they should live or die. Who the hell are you? Who are you? And this is the question that, that I had to raise to myself. When I start thinking about this. Who am I to judge anybody? So that type of thinking I had to begin to reject. I am not a, in a position to judge nobody because I have never walked in your shoes. I don't know what you experienced. I don't know how you grew up. I don't know nothing about you like that. I don't know. So if you don't know these things, that means you are judging and you are denying People justice, I thought that's what you don't like about racism. Racism, white supremacy, pink supremacy is a very unjust system. I thought that's what you did not like about racism, white supremacy. I thought that's the reason why you have a problem with that. But here you are with the same mindset as the racists because the racists said the same thing about all of us. Those coons, those niggas, those colors, they don't benefit nobody. They really need to be exterminated. They need to be eradicated. Unless you can change them into a chocolate-covered white man, maybe they might be redeemable. And you think the same way as your slave master, as the racists do. They say blacks should be uh, exterminated. Based on your logic, we would not never have had somebody like Malcolm X because Malcolm X came from Pookie and Ray Ray. Malcolm X was a low life. But when given the opportunity, when shown a different path, Malcolm had an opportunity to start doing and doing and changing his life for the better. And every Pookie and Ray Ray, all the people that we call Riff Raff, all the ones that we call undesirables, you don't know what their potential could be. You looking at it, you could be killing and murdering the next better than Malcolm X. You don't know. But you're so self-righteous and locked up into yourself. Then you talk about they are hindering our progress. How? What progress are you doing? What are you doing? You have accomplished nothing. What progress? These people talking this stuff are not even united themselves. They are beefing with one another, slandering each other. They are doing nothing. You're, you're nothing but, you're no better than Pookie and Ray Ray and Shaniqua and, and blah, blah, blah. Pookie and Ray Ray and most of these people out here are not bothering you. They're not bothering you at all. You're using them as an excuse for your failure. That's what it is. Oh, the reason why we can't progress is because of Pookie and Ray. No, the reason why we can't progress because you cannot unite with your own brothers and sisters. Even those of you who have evolved, those of you who are on this higher level, you're not doing nothing either. And you're no better in your behavior and you're acting no different than Pookie and Ray Ray or anybody else out there in the hood. You say that Pookie and Ray Ray holding themselves back. They, uh, uh, they refuse to evolve. They refuse to do better. Maybe they don't know how to do better. They don't know what the hell you're talking about. Why don't you be an example of what this higher level is supposed to look like? And then, why aren't you since you can judge people like that, they should be like you. 
then you have others who look down upon you. Well, I'm better than you. I'm a billionaire. Why don't you, how come you can't be like me? Why, what are you doing to hold yourself back? Everybody cannot be billionaires. Everybody cannot be a bus driver. Everybody cannot be a teacher. Everybody have to try to find their place in life where they can fit because that's just how it is. If you cannot read and write, you cannot expect to be a big time scholar. That's not how it's going to work. So you find where you fit. Our people, wherever you find them, if you were wise, if you truly was evolved, then you know how to use them and put them where they fit. Instead of trying to force them into spaces and places where they just don't belong. It's excuse making. And the thing about it, when you look at, when you really look at our people, the, the so-called hood rats and the thugs, and most of these people, a lot of our brothers and sisters, they have a lifestyle that they are caught up in, and you might not like it. Hell, they don't like how you live either. So what? You don't like how gays and lesbians live. They don't like how you live. The rich don't know, don't like how the poor live. The, 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 the poor want to be rich. You, they would like to do that, but hey, you know, but and we have our different lifestyles or whatever, and you are where you are at. I'm not in a position to judge you about nothing. I look at us, I look at you as my brother and my sisters. I look at us that way. And I want to work with you and work with us Wherever you are in life, I can work with you so that we so we can better ourselves and grow as a people instead of individuals. But now you have a group of individuals who think that they are better than Pookie and Ray Ray and Shaniqua and whoever. Oh, I'm better. They're stopping our progress. If you move, if you move Pookie and Ray Ray out the way right now, you're not gonna progress no further than what you're doing now. Because you're not doing a damn thing right now. Because they're not stopping your progress. Matter of fact, if Pookie and Ray Ray and Shaniqua and, and I don't know a lot of these different names. So that's why I keep repeating the same names over. Uh, Frankie J or whatever. If they saw us, the evolved, the higher intellectual. If they saw us progressing and making some moves, you would inspire them and give them a path that they can look upon where they might want to walk, like Malcolm did. Somebody just presented a different way. And Malcolm said, hey, yeah, I think I could do that. You don't want to even give nobody an opportunity. You're so high and mighty and self-righteous. I just don't get you like like Umar Justin, just go out and, and then kill folks. Who are you to judge? And what happens is, it's Pookie and Ray Ray today. Then, oh well, black folks, we're spiritual. We cannot have folks running around here talking about uh, they don't acknowledge God. They don't believe in God. We gonna we gonna kill them next. And if you and if you weigh too much, hey, you know you can't you can't weigh over two hundred pounds. Gotta kill you. Or whatever. They're going to find something else to focus on because somebody wants to be better and supreme over others. That's the reason why we in the problem, having the problem that we are in right now is because of racism, white supremacy, which says that you have one people superior over another and they deny you freedom, justice, and equality, deny you humanity. And here you are, you're not no better than the racist. Except you targeting the, the people that you come from because you feel so self-righteous because I don't think that way. I do better. We'll go ahead and do better. And be the example to show them that we can do better. But they're not stupid. They're looking at you and Pookie and Ray Ray is looking at you like, oh, Negro, you ain't no better than me. You Take your bougie ass on somewhere and sit down. Matter of fact, Keep screwing around. I'm going to put a bullet in your brain for real. And I'm not going to wait for some group action. I'll do it right now 
while we while we sitting here. You need to stop tripping with this all this self righteous. I just want to make two quick points on Nation of Islam. Two quick points. If you don't want to hear it, please fast forward. If you want to hear it, here we go. <laughs> I know those who are obsessed with uh, religious belief, those who are obsessed and fanatical about certain people, the divine, the special, of course, your uh, that which you are in love with, they don't never do any wrong. And that's fine. That's fine and dandy. You keep doing that, okay? Now, look, I want to make these two quick points. The first thing, well, actually, it's an observation. It's an observation. Two quick observations. This is what I noticed from personal experience. And like Arsenio Hall used to say back in the day, things that make you say, hmm, there's a video channel. And I'm very shocked that the person, the video channel owner, allows me to make my comments but so far I mean they they allow me to, to speak my mind and, and other people too they think you know but it is very clear that this channel supports and advocates for the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan no doubt about that and when they post videos they have a, a opening and it's a nice opening, cool. And then here comes a clip from a Caucasian lady and I, I maybe this was Savior's Day or, or whatever, I missed it at some point, but there's a young Caucasian lady Maybe not that young. Maybe in her thirties, probably. Never know about them because they can, when they start looking old, they look oh, you know what I'm saying? They don't look old for real. They're not like myself and in vogue. Okay, look. <clears throat> she says the world is gonna owe Minister Louis Farrakhan for saving humanity. <laughs> really. The world is going to owe, or we're going to thank Louis Farrakhan for saving humanity. Really? First of all, this man cannot even save himself. And God backs him up. He has all this power, and he even told us he no longer has his colon, his prostate, you don't even have your health, but you're going to save humanity, but your God can't even do nothing for you. How are you going to save humanity with a fake God? This God and none of these gods have ever done anything for anybody at any time. This is a fact. You cannot prove it. You want to give credit to God the same way that you gave credit to Santa Claus for bringing those presents. You want to give Santa Claus unearned credit, unearned praise for something he did not do. First of all, Santa Claus do not exist. That's the number one reason of why he cannot get credit 
for anything. He's a fictional character. You can make Santa Claus look and act and whatever, however you want to do it, because he, he don't exist anyway. What can Farrakhan do to save humanity? Long before Farrakhan, long before Elijah Muhammad, we had Islam. Prior to Elijah Muhammad, prior to Islam, what was Allah doing for the world? Matter of fact, while you are worshiping Allah, the Arabs was practicing slavery, the Christians was practicing slavery. But now, all of a sudden, Allah is going to change his award-winning, beautiful ways. He's going to come to Farrakhan, and all of a sudden, he's going to use Farrakhan and change the world. How are you going to change the world with something fake? You show no evidence except pretty speeches that you can have any kind of power to do nothing. I would like to ask this Caucasian woman, you believe this, why? What evidence, what is it that you have? Why are you giving this man credit he don't deserve? What has he done to show you he has the power, he has the capability to save humanity? Save humanity from what? From what? To save humanity from what? To take you where? To give you what? That's the question. Because we know that he's a religious person. He believes in this fake God that don't exist. And you're giving credit to this God for things this God has never done. This is a fact. You can get angry at me all that you want to and get upset. You have no evidence to show that your God has done anything. Well, the Spirit of God, you have not shown nothing. That's just some stuff that you believe and how you feel. But to actually show you have no evidence to prove that your God done anything, that's a fact. That's reality. And here's another observation. I personally know being around this Savior fella Farrakhan for years. The Nation of Islam is a parasitic organization. Now, when you first get started and you're struggling or whatever, I understand. We are sacrificing and we're doing what we need to do. But see, this is the thing about it. Even in, even in the Christian church, wherever you are at, any type of organization, in your family, whatever, if you are giving to that family, if you're giving to that organization, then at some point or another, that organization, that family should be giving you back. Otherwise, you need to leave that alone. Now, they are trying to raise, I think $3 million or $1 million, I don't know what it is, to give to Farrakhan for a gift. And whether it's Farrakhan or Marcus Garvey or Malcolm or whoever it is, Dr. King, they are the uh, ones in the forefront. They, did, they could not do it by themselves. Whatever Farrakhan is, I helped him get what he got, whether you like it or not. I helped him get what he got. A whole lot of us helped him get what he got. What do he give to you? False hopes and dreams and promises. What does the church give you? You get to go to church and, oh, little Jesus, oh, Lord, and fall all over the floor and jump around and sing and dance. How does that help you when you really need help? You give. But your organization, your leadership is supposed to give too. If Farrakhan is becoming rich, then though, especially those who have been with him for 20, 30 years, 
their condition is supposed to change too. They're supposed to benefit out of this. But you don't see that. Only the, the people on the top. This is this is what I I say. This is parasitic behavior. What does a parasite do? A parasite finds a victim and draws the blood from the victim. A tick, a flea, a leech, a worm that might sit in your colon. You eating all this food and actually you feeding worms in your colon. A parasite. They living off of you. Parasites don't give. Parasites take. That's what they do. So here on YouTube, you don't see people giving. And they have been giving to some of these YouTube folks, even some faceless trolls like Jason Black. You give them all your money, all your time, and Audible Lewis Minister Farrakhan and Dr. Boyce Watkins, and y'all just give and give. What do they give you back? You're nothing but something. They're nothing but a bunch of parasites, and they suck your blood. There's nothing wrong with wanting something when you give. You should. There's nothing wrong with expecting something in return. Even if it's small, you should expect something in return. When you take care of your children and you raise them from an infant to adult, you expect a, a little praise or something. I raise you from a little baby to, 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 to adult. Now, you would expect your children to praise you and give you some feed, give you something back in return because you're their parents, but the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and Tariq Nasheed, Yvette Carnell and, and Cynthia G and who all these are, Sanada and all these other folks that y'all love and adore, China Fox, uh, um, Michi X, uh, and then even some of the smaller folks, whatever, they don't give y'all nothing. It's my success. I earned this. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, this is what I earned. You ain't earned nothing you did with leech y'all folks all your life. You ain't nothing but a big ass parasite. You ain't, earn, you ain't earn nothing. You don't. You deserve. There's nothing wrong. Well, I'm, I'm doing this for God. God's supposed to give you something in return. God, Allah, this this God said, if you bow down and serve me, I promise you this, and I will give you this, and blah blah blah. What does this God do for you? Nothing. You make up stuff. You make up excuses for having nothing. You make up excuses what the Iowa Mr. Louis Farrakhan is doing for you. Hell, he done that for you 40 years ago. What is he doing for you now? The same old stuff. He opened up my eyes. He opened up your eyes 40 years ago, 50 years ago. How does that help you now? You actually sit around and don't mind the ticks and the fleas. You don't even scratch. You don't do nothing. You just watch the, 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 the tick. I actually seen a dog just sit there and actually look at the tick. Get bigger and bigger, sucking his blood. It didn't even, it just. <laughs> look at that big old. Wouldn't even scratch to try to get it off. And that's what you, that's what we do. You don't mind getting your blood sucked. They don't give you nothing. All these churches and temples and synagogues and mosques, whatever, they just take and take and take. They are in the position after all this year, all these years and decades and generations, all this religious garbage is in the position to finally give back now that we are dealing with this coronavirus thing. Because all thing they did was take for generations and for decades. Now that the people need you, now that the people need God, where is the church? Where is the mosque? Where is the synagogue? Where is the temple? Where, where is all this? They leave you out. You're on your own. And you still ain't learned nothing. You still sitting there watching the tick. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I can't get with you. I can't get with you. Fleas and ticks get on me. They got to get off. And I got rid of Farrakhan or other leeches as soon as I could. Oh, man. Parasites. You got all your bad boys, they fight and they curse. But Mr. Goody Two Shoes will whip you worse. But Mr. Two Shoes, we got some new shoes. The wives are running around with shoes and all. Free your mind. My own personal opinion, my own personal belief, I just want to put this out there for us to discuss the age-old question, what is the purpose of life? What is the purpose of life? I saw a video and these wild dogs was hunting a baby antelope. They caught up with the baby antelope. They grabbed the baby antelope and just ripped it to shreds. Good for the dogs. Bad for the baby antelope. Very, very violent. Then we turn around and talk about how peaceful and loving we are there's nothing look there's nothing peaceful and loving about life in general these wild dogs they were created to do what they do there's nothing biased there's nothing prejudice they don't hate the antelope this is how they have to live Unfortunately, that's how it is. It's violent. In order for something to live, something got to die. That's just how it is. Everything that we eat, including plants, was alive at one time. It must die so that we can live. And we destroy it. We break it down. The process is very, very violent. This is why I don't understand where are we getting this peace and love stuff from when the very life that we are is violent. Even from the time we are conceived, when a man copulate with a woman, and I'm not trying to be nasty, but all that humping and thrusting and what y'all do, that's violent. Boom, boom, you know, the late comedian John Witherspoon said, bang, 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 boom, 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 bang, bang, bang. That is not sounds of peace. That is sounds of violence. As the sperm enter the womb of the woman, the sperm is met with violence. The uh, antibodies of her body begins to attack the sperm. And they go to war in order to create this life and then you have a survivor men go into the woman's vaginal tract but there are many many deaths and just so happen it only takes one to make it to the promised land and this is where your suffering begins 
if you have a good mother, you might have a peaceful development. If you have a bad mother, she's taking in all these different chemicals and whatever. Your development might be bad. Maybe that's why when we finally come into this world, it's even worse. It's even worse. What is the purpose of life? Religion gives us the answer that they don't know. <clears throat> Religion gives us, spirituality gives us the answer to what we don't know. Can you prove this? No. We just believe this. But what we do know is that life is not peaceful. Life is <clears throat> very hard. Life is violent. There's nothing peaceful. If it was, as, it was, if it was so peaceful, why do you get angry and want to destroy? You want to destroy physically and you also want to destroy mentally. Slander, gossip, lies. You want to destroy another life form, another human being. What is great about all this? And why aren't we smart enough knowing what it is? How come we can't make it better? We just come up with excuses talking about God or some afterlife. Do you really think an afterlife going to be better than this? How? Because you might not be alive like we are right now as a spirit but if you're functioning there's nothing that can exist you got to get your energy from somewhere in order to exist whether you are spirit or whether you flesh in order to exist you have to have some type of energy some type of force is feeding you and from what we know and what we see something must die something must be destroyed in order for us to live. Now, unless you are set up like a plant, you know plants have chloroform and they can, they go through a process of photosynthesis and they can create their own food. However, they still have to take, they still have to destroy, they have to go into the earth and take from a source. They still have to take from something in order to live. If the soil does not have the nutrients, if the soil does not have what the plant needs, then the plant cannot live. And everything that is alive produces waste. So what do we do being alive? What do we do all through our life? We piss and shit. Simply, that's what we do. You eat, you drink, you piss, and you shit. That's all you do. All your life. From the time you're a baby. And we think it's cute. Well, mothers do. Oh, the poor baby. Look at the baby. The piss and shit on itself. And you clean the baby up. You think pissing and shitting is cute. Just clean it up a little bit. That's all we do. It's piss and shit. And we are filled up with piss and shit 24 hours a day. When you go to the restroom, you still and and piss. When you go to the restroom and take a dump, you still got shit and piss inside of you. It's always there. It never goes away. It's always there. That's all your life is, pissing and shitting. And then you have a sexual urge so that you can make more beings like yourself all they're going to do is be born and piss and shit. I want to bring before us what is the purpose of life that's all we do is piss and shit. Me personally, I've always had a problem with pissing and shitting. It's a disgusting process. But y'all want to come to me and come to us with this 
Everything is beautiful in its own way. That's what y'all want to say. Everything is beautiful in its own way. There's nothing beautiful about pissing. There's nothing beautiful about taking a shit. There's nothing beautiful and loving about that. It's disgusting. It stinks. And if you live in it, you get sick and you will die. You don't wash your hands. You don't keep yourself. <clears throat> wash some of this stuff away. It will kill you. <clears throat> but it's beautiful in its own way. And then some of us are, are obsessed with sex. So we can have babies. So they can piss and shit their life away. Because that's all you do. From the time you're born to the time that you die, the only thing you're going to do is piss and shit. That's all animals do. That's what everything that's alive on this planet do. It drinks. It takes in some kind of food and water. It piss and shit. Then you die. What is the purpose of life? And then you have religion that comes to give us an answer that don't make any sense. But for some of us, we just want to answer. Oh, so that's the reason why we piss and shit. That's the reason why I was born. Oh, okay. I remember my mother told me when I was an infant, when I was a little baby, I refused. I did not want to drink. I did not want to eat. And my mother kept telling me, if you don't drink, you don't shit. If you don't drink, if you don't shit, you're not going to live. And I remember my mother saying that. And when I had younger siblings, and they did not want to eat their food, they didn't want to drink from the baby bottle. Well, actually, we was all breastfed. They didn't want to drink. I would say to them, if you don't drink, you don't shit. If we don't eat, if we don't drink, you die. As simple as that. Okay, so we're here. What is the purpose? Don't bring us lies. Don't tell us about peace. There's nothing peaceful about existence. It's all about violence. I call it control violence. Now, the human being, since now we are unnatural, we are outside of the wild dogs and the antelope, the jaguar and his prey. We are outside of that because these animals only kill to survive because that's how they was created. But the human being, you murder for the fun of it. You murder for material gain. You murder for domination. You don't murder just to survive. You murder and you kill for pleasure. You see pictures of people with deer and giraffe and elephants and lions. They have shot and killed not because the deer, the giraffe, or the rhino was trying to do something, cause them any kind of harm. They purposely went out to kill, shoot and kill another life form. You have people, human beings, they go out and they murder for pleasure, for fun. You murder because you emotional. You murder because you get upset. Animals don't do that. What is the purpose of life? What is the purpose of being here? Just so that you can come here, you piss and shit, and somebody end up murdering you. You're raped. You're sexually molested. You made a slave. The atrocities go on and on and on. You don't know what your gender is. Oh, you was born a male, but I feel I'm a female. You was born a female, or oh, I feel like a male. What is the purpose of life to go through crap like this? The purpose of life, here we are, the only thing we do is piss and shit. Piss and shit. 
and we want to try to find answers. We want to try to find reasons to justify our behavior, even outside of nature, going all outside of the natural world. 